Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and today I'm doing my learning exercise walkthrough playthrough of In the Heart of Darkness. Yes, I haven't played this game before and this one was kindly provided to me as a review copy by the Moon Grill. So thanks so much for the opportunity here. And this game comes with a, let's say, a very small solo mode. Um, where you have to, I think, increase the difficulty level a little bit because what this game really does, they are trying to get rid of any alpha gamers by introducing the so-called silence rules here. So you're not really allowed to talk with other players what your intents are, what other players should be doing. If you do so, you are punished by drawing some of these cur curse cards, which I think are pretty nasty, actually. Um, so yeah, I think... I definitely do appreciate the effort, but I also am not a big fan of these complete silence rules, right? I mean, I'm also very much against any alpha gamers and I do appreciate games where you have to at least keep your cards hidden, for example. So you're not playing with full open, or not everyone plays with full open information, but here it's a little bit extreme, but maybe I really need to simply try that. Maybe, maybe it's actually quite fun. And I have no clue what I'm talking about here. There is actually an action which you can take, exactly the talk and trade action here, which then allows you to meet with another player and then, I don't know, through whispering or through writing stuff on, on paper to share some information with that player. But apart from that, you are typically not supposed to really talk about the game itself with strategy and whatnot you can still explain rules and whatnot of course or any any questions around rules but yeah you always I mean there's always danger that you are giving away information this way so sometimes it's hard to follow what was now a breach of the silence and whatnot and what you then actually do in the solo mode in order to punish yourself you're still playing a two-player game basically but you're reducing the amount of actions that you can take and i think your hand limit is also reduced by one respectively but apart from that it's basically a two-player game which you can play solo so i will set up the board and then i think we should be ready to go right off the bat yeah and here we are. Before I get started, I should mention that this game comes with an, basically an expansion on its own, which provides the Western Shores expansion board here, makes the things a little bit more difficult. I think you're also bringing in some additional quests or so. And on top of this, and I think this is even a bigger one, this game comes with a campaign book, which consists of two campaigns, which you can play then, um, making this game a little bit more spicy. I haven't really read through that. I'm not sure how legacy the campaign is or what happens in scenario one, how will it affect the scenario two and whatnot. But yeah, you have definitely the opportunity to play this as a normal sandbox game, or if you want, you can play through the campaign. I'm relatively certain you can play these campaigns more than once. And apart from that, before I get started, a huge shout out to all of my patrons and channel members. You guys are truly amazing. Can't really tell you how much I appreciate your support. And I think with that being said, we should be pretty much good to go. Drawn to a mysterious island in search of fame, wealth and salvation, several individuals meet at this place of shadows only to be held there by misfortune as their ship is stranded upon the rocks. However, there is something more than misfortune here, some force. It seems escaping the heart of darkness is not as simple as leaving the island. Worse still, the island is seemingly devoid of life. The only inhabitants a number of hideous creatures that move with a dark purpose. Vowing to leave no one behind, you dismantle your long-range radio and split the radio parts between each person. Search the island for tools to survive and complete quests that might help you unravel whatever forces hold you captive on this island. So that's basically the story so far. And in order to win, we have to reassemble the radio we have to call the rescue boat basically at the harbor we have to be all there and we have to complete as many quests as we have protagonists protagonists and players is somewhat interchangeable but not in a solo mode because i'm only one player but i'm controlling two protagonists so these two protagonists i believe are also considered to be players this is important when we are talking about spawning and whatnot we are losing if the darkness tracker is increasing above seven then we have immediately lost or if we are basically running out of protagonists so when you are killed that's not the end of the world we are about to draw a new protagonist but i think when we are running out of those then we 
most likely will also be running out of um, basically on the darkness track itself and yeah players will want to avoid increasing the darkness track obviously because more sinister things are about to happen i have drawn the first two characters randomly or protagonists randomly i'm not sure if these will be the only ones that we will be seeing first of all we have explorer wins shredder who has two strength and two sanity his special ability says creatures at your location do not prevent you from using its location action so we are very very nimble swift character which is cool and this also goes together with the personal item opportunism as an item but yeah you get the idea that's basically our personal card that that's the term they should have used once per turn if you have no more than three cards in total move up to two spaces travel light and you can travel often and curses i believe do count towards our hand limit of four by the way in a two or in a solo game like this and our three random items or cards that we have drawn are those three unfortunately we have to discard one of those as part of setup but i still wanted to show them all we have a quest which is pretty important actually the thing is in order to um, complete this quest we have to discard or find and discard some dynamite at the old mines we have a ritual and we have some holy water but let's see who our second protagonist is and here we have the priest john preston you can trade curse cards okay that is nice normally obviously you can't do that only one strength but three sanity but so he would be pretty great doing these rituals basically well, therefore you have to roll your sanity it's very similar to whatever eldritch horror arkham horror third edition when you are casting these spells for example having high low value for example in this case um, would be good his personal item which is also not really an item maybe it's the bible because it says prayer during combat your strength is treated as one higher if you have used the talk and trade action this turn okay so we have to pray together it seems which is not so powerful in a two protagonist game because yeah we have to plan that well in order to meet on the island and as for the three cards that we were allowed to draw again we have to discard down to two we have the unknown medicine which um, i think you're rolling some dice and depending on what you roll you either get strength or sanity for the rest of your turn that's not bad the boots are cool initiate combat is a free action this turn so it gives us an extra action that's not too great quite honestly crafted traps or getting traps are relatively huge because with a trap you can in theory also kill multiple creatures even though the biggest ones so i think in this case it's relatively easy we are not fighting immediately so i think we can get rid of those boots they are discarded so they might come back sooner or later we still need to decide what we want to hold on to again the ritual is pretty cool but as we don't have as many creatures out on the board right now this might be the weakest one again here we may have to find dynamite at least it's giving us a goal right finding dynamite that's definitely not a bad thing so i think i am getting rid of the ritual of banishment so we are holding on to the holy water because it gives us an extra die for each test or so we are rolling any given turn and again i can spend this anytime i see fit yeah let's do that both of our characters are starting down here basically at the stranded ship locations this is where our ship has stranded it doesn't look so broken to me but who knows and overall this is the island we are trying to explore because we are already here at a loot location i think this is something worthwhile maybe we will find some dynamite rather sooner or later um, we have some gates out here which right now are still protecting us from any potential monsters or creatures creatures i believe they're referring to here we have some more loot locations here we have some tunnels so we can move from tunnel to tunnel here we can build stuff keep in mind we also want to find the radio items so i think both of them should be finding stuff here and here the ritual cavern is also a very special location because you can of course uh, do rituals there but there you are auto succeeding in your rituals which of course is not a bad thing obviously and again the lighthouse is i believe the one where we have to assemble the radio we have to 
basically we have to spend three radio cards there in order to call the rescue boat which i think comes in two stages unfortunately so first stage we are placing it on basically this face down side here and then at the end of the next round we are flipping it to the active side and then it has basically reached us i think again it will come to the harbor yeah i think it will come to the harbor so that's basically our goal and now we can get Started. Each round consists of a spawning phase. Reveal and resolve as many cards from the spawn deck as the number of players. And again, here's the one problem. I think it should be protagonists, quite honestly. And that's how I'm playing this. Otherwise, it would feel rather dull. Then we are taking our player turns, basically doing our actions, doing our free actions. And then first they are spawning and then they are advancing and doing damage to us so we always have some time basically getting rid of those creatures or maybe move out of their space because we might be losing some sanity there and obviously that's a bad thing and then we are doing these things over and over again again the game is played over an intermittent number of rounds i believe yeah i not not every round we are we losing one we are not increasing our darkness track at least <laughs> Oh, but again, let's see how things go. So let's spawn some monsters. So we are drawing the top card from the spawning deck here. And then because we are still, maybe I should show that to you, in the first stage of the darkness track, we are doing the topmost part, um, basically the topmost location on these spawning cards. Yeah, which is <laughs> great news. Are you kidding me? We are spawning our very first crawler. At the stranded ship the crawler per se is not too bad it doesn't really try to kill us the crawlers are basically moving towards the heart of darkness up here and whenever they make it there they remove from the board but they will then increase the darkness tracker by one but they are not really harming us other than i think if we are in the same location as one of these monsters then we will lose the sanity so that's already bad enough so that was our first spawning card let's do the second one and here we have the cemetery so this would be um, i believe this is one of these devourers they do damage to us so they're really actively hunting us down in this case it's another crawler and i think when we are running out of this we are going to the next higher level i believe at least so the cemetery is up here right now that's not a problem so they will move one two three three four space so we have some time getting rid of those but we have to actively engage them that much is clear originally i was going to loot here we can't do that because right now we have a creature at our location i think yeah he can actually ignore that creatures at your location do not prevent yeah exactly so with him the nimble winds shredder we would be allowed to loot here but i think for now we are maybe trying to kill that creature so for our very first action and i need to find something in order to track our actions and i'm using these little cubes here so with our first action again we are starting with winds shredder we can take these actions in any order so we can decide each round if we want to start with winds or if you want to start with john preston but once you're taking your turn you have to take all of your actions so with our first action winds is going to attack that crawler here so we are taking two of the dice again our strength is two and for a normal test you are or for normal combat test you are rolling your strength value um, we only have arkham horror style two successes on each of these dice um, and we are looking for one success in this case fortunately we can only ever combat at any one location once we move somewhere else we can still fight there again but right now that's not possible and yeah that was a huge whiff nicely done great job wins <laughs> great job marcus i mean you all know how good or bad i'm rolling these dice so that was our first action but because we are still here we can with wins a special ability still loot and i think that's what we are going to do so we are spending another action in order to take a loot action looting because it really costs us some time now she said now it's a free action i for always forget that it's a free action exactly we can do that at the stranded ship exactly draw one card from the loot deck if any creatures are in play choose one closest to your protagonist and move it following the advanced creature 
creatures, which is, I think, good. Good and bad, actually, but it, we didn't have to spend the action here. So first, we are drawing our loot card, and it's a knife. I mean, a knife can't be bad, right? Reroll misses once per combat. You can play a second weapon card. Return this to your hand if you roll two or more hits. Mm-hmm, of course. But for now, we are allowed to hold on to that. So that's basically our fourth card. I do believe the personal item does count towards our four card hand limit. And then the creature closest to your character, which is obviously is moving towards the movement rule, which in this case means it's moving towards the gate. The good thing is for now, the gate will protect us. So we can't move out, but when this creature is moving again, it will instead put a damage marker in. And if we would place the third damage marker here, this gate is broken and then we will also increase the darkness tracker by one. So a lot of ways how you are driving up the darkness tracker. Then we still have a lot of actions left. So I think with our second real action, we are going to move over here to the southern gate. And again, I guess the idea is to protect the southern gate as much as possible. So because we are now at a new location, Location, we can do a combat action again. So I guess we are doing this and I think now we want to get rid of stuff. Again, for me, this is a learning exercise. I want to see how things work. So let's try to use that knife and we can even hold on to the knife if we are rolling two hits, which obviously is not so likely. But yeah, we are still only rolling two dice here from our character sheet. Yes, exactly. And that's one hit. So the monster is dead. We will now be using our dice, our knife to reroll that. And if this is now also a hit, yeah, we can hold on to the knife. And no, okay, it was close, but at least this sucker is dead. It's not damaging our gate. I still think it was worth it. Nicely done. We still have, but the knife is gone, unfortunately. We have to discard it. Pity. Then we have two more actions, so we could think we are going to do that. So with our act, we are doing another move action here to the old manor. Then we are simply drawing again, right? It's still a free action and we can take free actions in each of these locations once. But because again, we have moved to a different location, we can still take that action. So we are taking another card. And that's another ritual, the ritual of command. In order to pass, we are doing a sanity check, um, move a creature one space in the direction. Okay, we can move creatures back. If they're awfully close to the heart of darkness, we can use this ritual to move them back. So I think for now, we are definitely holding on to that. There is no point uh, not doing that. Again, we only have to discard down if we have, I think, more than four in this case. And then we have one more normal action. And I think I may want to prepare ourselves maybe taking out that other crawler up there because he will be moving towards the northern gate and will start destroying it and that's something we want to avoid right so i think let's do that so we're moving here to the southern tunnel and from the southern tunnel with one move action we can then move to the northern tunnel unfortunately we can't use our opportunism if you have no more than three cards in total move up to two spaces so we cannot use it right now but i still think it is quite okay because more creatures might be spawning so maybe we want to take out something else in between between. But I think because we looted exactly, we have to move that monster now to the northern gate. And that's basically the end of Winds' turn. You see, it's a very super simple game. And as of round two or three, I can really play this game like tak tak. Over to John Preston, the priest. You can trade curse cards. I'm not sure if that's a good thing. Oh yeah, one thing I shouldn't forget. Whenever we are entering the Heart of Darkness, we will immediately gain a curse. And I think there are some discard conditions on those curses. They will clog up your hand. And if you have four or more curses, yeah, then you have basically been defeated as well. But yeah, still, what is our priest going to do? I guess we also need to start looking for stuff down here right so we have five actions here and again this doesn't cost us any action it's a free action at our location so yeah let's loot that's a free action keep in mind so we are looting oh a pistol that can't be bad right plus one dice in combat nice you can play a second weapon card so together with a knife this could be nice and we are 
Oh, we return this if we roll one or more hit. Okay, that's really nice. Okay, that's much better than the knife. And that's something that I read on The Geek, um, a small solo review that um, there is definitely a lot of randomness and luck involved in this game. Or maybe if you are unlucky, like me um, then you're basically out of the game relatively soon so we have looted at this location which again means they're starting to damage the northern gate so it would move it can't move because of the gate so they're starting to shake in not that gate and whatever banging their claws and whatever against it so two more and the gate is broken and we will start to increase our darkness tracker here first one is still okay ish yeah, still, we don't want to see that quite obviously. So then we have our actions. What are we really going to do? Are we searching again? Can we try to defeat that creature up there? One, two, three. Guess we can move up here. Four. No, we can't make it to the northern gate. So that's definitely a bummer. So we will, mm, this will hit this northern gate once more. I think spawning it up there wasn't great. Maybe I shouldn't have killed that monster. So I already start to see there are also some puzzly aspects in this game, which is absolutely nice. I already start to like that. So maybe I should have let that monster move one or two more spaces up and instead move this monster up instead of the other ones, right? So that's some Something that true. I think, yeah, which is which you have to balance throughout the game. Nice. So still, what am I going to do? Maybe it's time to craft a trap. I think we can craft a trap at the old military complex way up in the north. Um, I think we can auto pass that test here. But I think let's do that. So this is an action. This is really an actual action to craft a trap. So we are discarding this card. We have to roll a test, which is a strength test, unfortunately. So it's not very likely that we are going to pass the test. On the other hand, we could go for the unknown medicine, but the unknown medicine could increase our sanity which wouldn't be great right yeah exactly exactly so no i think we are only rolling one die here maybe i should have traded this oh that was also bad i should have traded this trap to wins because he would be rolling two dice but anyway i will try that now again i'm learning this game as i go and of course it's a miss so we have basically failed to craft that trap that's a pity and then i think we really have to start moving up we want to secure that gate i think we have to do that so we have still four more actions right one action here what's the quickest way two three we could move to the northern tunnel and then at least make it next time maybe that's what we should do second action to move in here i don't want to loot again because then we will definitely lose the gate up there um, then we are doing this and with our last action we are moving from the southern tunnel up here to the northern tunnel and from there we should be able to make it with two movements over there whatever might be spawning i think we have to spread out a little bit yeah i think so so that's basically the end of the round uh, end of our action phase that is now we will advance the creatures this creature wants to move towards the heart of darkness right now it can't so it's damaging the northern gate again as long as it's only quote unquote damaged we can still repair it that's a good news but they, these are all the monsters that were advancing we are not suffering any sanity loss because we are not at a location with monsters so we can basically move into the next round of the game nice let's draw our very first spell Bone card. It's again the cemetery and it's still a standard crawler. Right now nothing else will happen there but you already see the problem with this gate here. But once this gate is destroyed, it's destroyed, right? So then then yeah, floodgate is open. And then we have at the northern gate. Oh no, are you kidding me? Another crawler, right? Okay. Mm. Okay, what can we do about it? The problem really is each character can only combat once per location. That's the problem. We can't spend five of our actions to try to get rid of these creatures. That's not possible. Now I'm really a little bit frustrated that I have discarded the ritual of banishment, right? Kill all creatures at one location containing any protagonist. So someone could have moved there. Maybe we could have traded this to the priest. <laughs> okay, but yeah. 
I made my choices, I made my bed, now I have to sleep in it. But of course we still have the ritual of command which will also help us quite honestly because we can move both of these away. Maybe then still fight once with the priest or so. Maybe that's the thing. I guess that's what we are going to do actually. Am I going to spend a card before I do? I still haven't found any dynamite unfortunately. But I think we will start with wins again. So with our first action we are moving over here to the northern tunnel. With the second action we are moving here to the ritual cavern. And with the third action we are going with a consult action. Keep in mind the ritual cavern is a special location which allows us for one action to pass a ritual automatically. Normally we would now roll two dice here in order to see if we pass or not. In this case we have automatically achieved this. So I think that's definitely worth it. So we will cast the ritual of command. Again we have auto pass it up to two times. Move a creature one space in a direction of your choice. Nice. So we're discarding this and I'm relatively certain we can also spread these two activations. So first and second. So right now the northern gate is still free. And then we have two more actions left, right? Question is should we go there or not? The problem really is we would be stuck there and we might be losing some sanity because the monsters will come back. Or should we say let's not worry about that too much. Let's have I don't know the priests repair that or so. Additionally it's also not very effective or efficient to do that because here we can basically remove both damage tokens but then we would have to spend two actions. Still considered to be one action but we can spend more action points in order to do that. So with one more action I could have really repaired it twice and I think that's not really worth it. So I guess we are maybe preparing stuff. Let's take our we have we can move twice basically right we have three cards exactly once per turn with our opportunism yeah we will tap it we are moving for one action down here twice i think we are going to loot here again radio parts okay that is nice and in a multiplayer game this would also allow you to ignore the break the silence rule by discarding it right we discard this and two other radio parts items at the lighthouse to increase the darkness track to five and summon the rescue boat yeah that's something i may have mentioned i uh, should have mentioned when you call the lifeboats because that's somewhat explained also in the silence rule when you're using radios then all these monsters are going bonkers um, and crazy and whatever that's why you're increasing the darkness track but I still think you have to hold all these three radio cards I think we cannot go and place one there and other players can do that at least I think maybe that's wrong but that's how I will play it for now so I will hold on to the radio parts that much is clear ah, but the problem really is I'm not already at my hand size of but yeah no I think I'm only checking hand size actually at the end of a turn. Yes indeed. Mm, so throughout your turn you can still hold on to more than four cards in your hand. Again this doesn't count as a card. This is our character obviously. Because I looted one monster has to move. Right now that is still quite all right. We still have one more action left and with that we are moving up here to the abandoned hut. There is no special action possible up there. It's simply an abandoned hut, right? And that's the end of Winces turn we would now check our hand size which is four we are good let's move over to the priest we are spending two actions to move one two spaces in here right now nothing will happen so we can move through these spaces only when they are starting their advancement step then we might be taking some hits in this case that's not going to happen then we are spending two more actions to remove these two damage markers okay that was important i believe and then we have one more with one more we could really debate if we want to use our pistol to try to kill that one up here you would be rolling two dice and we would hold i think that's what we are going to do actually i think let's try to get rid of that monster no but then we will be here if the monsters will get there actually 
Hmm, exactly. When we are here and they will be moving to us, we will take two hits, I think, for each monster. So I think what we have to do now is we can't fight. We have to run away. So with our last action, we are moving. Hmm, does it matter? I think we are moving in here because there we could possibly trade or trade and talk. And the trade and talk with the prayer gives us, I think, um, plus one or so on a die roll, which is never a bad thing. Yeah, I think that's already the end of the round again. So let's do the movement. The first creature here will damage the northern gate again. But right now that is still quite all right. Then these two folks will move over here. And again, wow, three with this ritual. This would have been so perfect. I'm such an idiot. But I didn't know that they're coming out all at the same location. I mean, who could know that? But that's basically their advancement. And also, yeah, more or less the end of the round. We haven't lost, hooray, we haven't won, hmm. but we are moving into the next round of the game. And I think I will do one more round this video and then I will call it uh, just to give everyone some time to correct me. I'm pretty sure I've made some goofs, maybe some rules I may have missed to mention. I uh, very much appreciate your input there. So in this case, let's go back back to the start of the round strangely enough we are still in stage one so let's draw our first card oh and we see our very first event there's not a huge amount of events in that deck but when they come out i'm pretty sure it's devastating all creatures at no outdoing the advanced creatures phase discard this at the end of the round one extra location so i think they will break the gate and then they will most likely make it towards the heart of darkness or maybe towards us so this could become a problem actually let's place that card next to these creatures up there we still have to draw one more of course and we have another event and i shuffle the heck out of this deck multiple times promised when this is revealed place the guardian the guardian are you kidding me? Wow, that's that's really... But I think we are okay, actually, because the Guardian right now only have one life points here. Place the Guardian at the village if it is not in play. It is not. So here we have the Guardian. What else? Remains in play. The Guardian's location is now considered to be the Heart of Darkness for all rules. Ooh, except that you do not gain a Darkness. It's a curse card, by the way, for entering it. Discard this when the Darkness track increases. But we have our very first Guardian on the board, which, again, right now, he only has a life point point of one it's always basically on where we are here on this stage which i think for now is okay it's a standard monster um but we have to place it. where was it the village so this guy is here we might be able to get rid of him right away again the the guardian is getting more stronger the higher the game goes i mean if we're calling the radio or the boat through the radio then the guardian will have a strength of five which i believe it's pretty pretty bad but yeah we have two event cards in place we haven't spawned any more monsters which hmm other than the guardian here of course but these were our two spawns and now we have to really heavily think about what it is we are trying to do the guardian will actively hunt down us one of us basically and is doing damage to us and again we don't have an awful lot of health points available to us it's one and two basically so we might be dying relatively easy in this game i still think it's better taking out those crawlers up north at the northern gate because again we want to hold on to these gates as long as possible again if we're breaking the gate or if it's damaged or completely broken then we are increasing the darkness track we have the pistol so maybe we can fight there once that's really the the limitating factor right now so because again we can only combat once per location once per turn per location roll to kill creatures at the location so we are not able to get rid of all three of those that's a problem i think we really need to try it so we will again start with wins shredder wins is now using his holy water each time you roll dice this turn roll one extra die so this counts for the entirety of our action which is cool and this also means we are down to three cards which then also triggers our opportunism here not a bad thing obviously but still with our first action we are moving here to the northern gate then we are initiating combat against one of those we are normally rolling two strength dice in this case because again of our holy water we are rolling three dice okay let's at least try that 
So three dice, but we don't have any rerolls. No, we don't. Okay, so let's see. Are you kidding me? Oh, this is so bad. Arkham Horror at its finest. Come on, one success on three dice. Okay, everything is falling apart now. So we can no longer initiate combat at this location with wins, that is. But now we can use our opportunism. Um, basically tapping this so we can move two spaces for one action, right? So one and two down here to the village. Then we do the same thing again, right? We are initiating another combat. So we are down to only one action point afterwards. Exactly. So let's roll those. Okay, two hits. I take that. So the Guardian is out of here. Nicely done. We are removing this. Apart from that, we are not gaining anything, but at least we are also not losing anything. And now something we have to consider. We still have that extra die this round, but I don't think we can properly use it. We could now really say that we are abandoning this gate for good and say we are now going for another loot action here. Maybe that is something we may want to consider actually. Then one of these fellas will move we could have looted first actually but now i rolled dice then this guy would have moved no then i think we, yeah we could still have done it somehow yeah, again ah that's something where you have to think through your turn so uh, there's really a puzzly aspect in this game which is really good yes there is luck you're rolling dice you're hoping for the right cards but you always also have to think through your turns you cannot simply whatever be headstrong and then storm towards the gates will we be able to repair enough Hmm. We could do the same thing, actually. With our free action, we are now at this location. We are looting again. Yeah, yeah let's absolutely do that. We are drawing another card. And that's another ritual. Okay, the ritual of command. We already seen that. But again, this allows us to move. Wow, maybe we can do that right away, actually. Because we get the extra die still. Not fit for inhuman consumption, which makes sense, of course. Um, yeah, let's do that. Um, yeah, we are casting a ritual. We are not doing this at the ritual cavern, so we now really have to pass a test. But again, that's our last action. Again, this allows us to maybe hold on to the gate. So we're rolling three dice again. Again, we have a two on sanity. And we get the extra die from the holy water. And yes, we were successful. Awesome. So one and two you guys are moving back ah they're moving twice right and the village is also the heart of darkness not also i think it's the heart of the but that's okay i think it's still okay yeah that was the ritual of command nice okay now things are looking differently i guess yeah these were all the actions for him so we can discard this card here as well the holy water it served us well and i believe now with our first action with the priest we are moving here to the northern gate now we will be using our pistol because we have enough action. So we're getting plus one dice and we should have really traded and talked. So we are only rolling two dice. We could play a second weapon card. We don't have a second weapon card. No, we are rolling these two dice. We're getting this back if we're rolling one success. If we don't, that's bad anyway, right? And yes, this is a success. Nicely done. Okay, this crawler is no more and we can hold on to the pistol. That was huge. Then we are spending a third action to repair the gate i think we can hold on to the gate one more round which is nice yeah it's really good and then we have still two more actions we definitely need to move out of here that much is clear because if we are here these guys will yeah they will kill us so i guess we are moving here to the village we could take another freebie i think these are two movement actions then we would be losing the gate so we can't do a loot action again because that's how I understand they basically get two movement actions and for each movement action they would be then also at least damage the gate once yeah 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 so then maybe one and two let's move down to the village maybe for the next round sooner or later we will lose that gate for sure but I think for now let's try to delay that as much as possible so these were the last two actions and then we are should we move to the ritual cavern no we don't have we don't have a ritual no that doesn't help so now we will be 
doing the advancement step of the creatures, the crawlers up there. All creatures advance one extra location doing the advanced creatures. So one, two, that's at least my understanding. That's I'm going to play that. And then the same thing here, one and two. So the gate is still very much alive. Nicely done. We can still now debate if we want to continue to repair that. Um, and maybe at some point in time, we at least want to get rid of one more of those crawlers because then we have them under control. With three, this was really a problem. Now they are down at two. And I think with one, we can manage. At least that's how I think. But there will be more creatures spawning. So what now we can get Get rid of this event card here. I believe this event card up here is still valid. Discard this when the darkness track increases. So remains in play. The guardian's location. Ah, oh, the guardian's location is now considered to be the heart of darkness for all rules. I see. I see. Okay, it's not just the village. It's basically wherever the guardian is. Wherever. So if then crawlers would move in there, we would then increase the darkness from there. Um, I think a card is still there because it could spawn before we are actually increasing darkness. So yeah, I think this will have to remain in play for now. But I think with that being said, I will call it for today. Let me know what you think. Definitely let me know if I made any rules goofs or if I misinterpreted some of the rules. Then I still have some time to repair that maybe in my next video. And I think I have found the part in the rules where it says a player at the lighthouse can play three of these at once. Basically those radio cards. So this answers my question I had. So I cannot go there, discard one card and then whatever, go on with my other business. No, I have to do that basically as one let's call it action i think it's not even an action it doesn't really say is that an action i don't really know but anyway that's something i have to consider maybe i have to hand over these radio parts to the priest or so because i want to keep my item level low in order to move as quickly as possible but anyway i really hope you are enjoying the game so far i'm actually having a blast here i quite like it so far i already start to see where i'm wrong and where you really have to yeah think through your turns in advance in order to optimize your action efficiency and whatnot or your action points efficiency and in which order you are doing things so this definitely does matter which again is something i do like again i like a good narrative in a game but it's also cool when you can somewhat game the game a little bit and doesn't have anything to do with in the heart of darkness here but that's something which i very much enjoy about arkham horror the third edition because from all the other games out there um, in that universe this is the one which you can game the most it's very balanced compared to other chaos chaotic games like eldritch horror arkham horror second edition or so which i also do enjoy i like them a lot as well no no questions asked here but again the third edition is really if you haven't played these kind of games with euro gamers then definitely play the third edition because you have at least some level of control that's how i feel about this game anyway so yeah that's basically the first episode of my playthrough of in the heart of darkness again let me know what you think share your thoughts let me know what i should be doing next i'm always open for advice i definitely need your help <laughs> that much is clear and yeah with that being said hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and yeah until then Bye-bye.